Um, call the roll. I would like to express on behalf of council to our clerk, Tammy Reisner, happy birthday. Today's Tammy's birthday. Thank you very and, much. Uh, you know, I would sing happy birthday, but I was declared a non-singer when I was in third grade. In, so you don't want to hear it. So please call the roll. Richard Bardak. Here. Peg Conway. Here. Ben Hunt. Here. Alita K. Mine. Here. Tom Muthing. Here. Ray Warren. Here. Scott Larmer. Here. Andrew Cakey. Here. Chief Wallace. Here. And if everyone could please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. Thank you everyone for joining us this evening. It's nice to have a few more people in the council chambers for a meeting. Um, hopefully we're starting to get back to a little bit more normalcy, but uh, you know, I'm glad to see everyone has their mask on and everything like that. That's great. Um, first item on the agenda is our minutes from our last meeting. Those who are circulated in advance, are there any comments on the minutes? Seeing no comments, we can consider the minutes approved. Uh, the village manager will now present the finance report for August 2021. Thank you, Mayor. In addition to the UAN report that was included in your council packet for the month of August financials, I have prepared a memo that summarizes some of the aspects of our revenues and expenses for the general fund for the month of August. So the earnings tax collections for the month of August was about $138,000. So our year-to-date collection of earnings tax is $2.3 million. Our budget, our estimate for that was $3 million. So we've already collected about 78% of the earnings tax for 2021. The village has received $97,000 in property tax. This was a final payment that we received through Hamilton County. And then we also booked $5,300 of uh, money from the local government fund that is funded through the, comes through the state of Ohio. Our estimate for that amount is about $55,000 this year. So we're on our way to collecting that. So total revenue for the month of August was $456,000. Uh, year to date, we've collected 4.5 million, and that is uh, about 87% of what we had estimated we would collect in 2021. On the expense side of the equation, expenses for the month of August, $362,000. Our year to date expenses of $3.4 million. So we have uh, <clears throat> expended about 60% of the 2021 budget, which was $5.7 million. Uh, we ended the month of August with a unencumbered general fund balance of $6.7 million. That concludes my report. Are there any questions from the manager? Thank you very much. Next item on the evening tonight, we have uh, our Bridget Kelly, our state representative here uh, for a couple items and welcome Bridget. Thank you very much, Mayor, members of council, for having me this evening. Uh, my name is Bridget Kelly. I'm currently serving my third term in the State House, uh, and I have the privilege of representing uh, Amberly in the legislature. So thanks for having me tonight. Um, I wanted to start out, first of all, uh, just to make sure that residents know how to contact our office in case they ever need us. Uh, certainly for you all on council, you know where to find us. But uh, for residents, you can email us at rep31, that's R-E-P 31, at ohiohouse.gov. Or our phone number is 614-466-5786, 614-466-5786. Five seven eight six, and so uh, during this term, I've been serving on the finance committee as well as the finance subcommittee for transportation, the state and local government committee, the government oversight committee, and the Ohio Retirement Study Council. So, particularly if folks have questions pertaining to any of those areas, we'd be glad to help. 
Um, so I wanted to just give a quick update on what was happening at the State House um, tonight. In addition um, to presenting this proclamation on behalf of the Secretary of State's office, um, Kenny Henning, who is the Southwest Regional Director for the Secretary of State's office, uh, sends his regards, uh, but I promised him that I would uh, do him proud. And so the Secretary of State's office sends out these proclamations after the census numbers are taken to, um, to declare the number of persons who live in the various um, political subdivisions of the state. And so congratulations to Amberley Village on a federal census count of 3,840 residents. So I will give this one more flash. Um, <laughs> So, if we can do a formal presentation, you're the mayor. You run the show here. <laughs> oh, sorry. I also told the mayor um, we have matching Xavier masks, so I was glad I didn't wear mine tonight. <laughs> but much like you, my gift to Tammy will also be not to sing to her on the occasion of her birthday. So one of the reasons why it's important to know how many people live in political subdivisions is because right now at the State House, we are in the process of redistricting both for the state legislative lines and for the congressional lines. So the process of drawing the state legislative maps has concluded uh, for now. And I say for now because there is an asterisk. There are three court cases pending uh, regarding the lines. But if nothing changes as of this moment, uh, Amberley will in fact have a new State House district uh, in the November 2022 elections. So presently we're in the 31st House district in the next election. Again, if nothing changes, Amberley will be in the new 28th House district. And Amberley will be included along with municipalities like Finneytown, Springdale, Sharonville, Woodlawn, Glendale, Lockland, Reading, Deer Park, Montgomery, Sycamore Township, and others. Again, that's if nothing changes. Uh, we are also in the process right now of drawing the congressional maps, and I say we as a very loose term. Um, the Ohio General Assembly was supposed to have voted on a map as of September 30th. We uh, did not reach that deadline, and so now the congressional lines are being drawn by the Ohio Redistricting Commission, which is comprised of the governor, secretary of state, auditor, a designee of the president of the Senate, the president of the Senate, the Ohio House Minority Leader, and the Ohio Speaker of the House. Um, so those folks are presently drawing a congressional map, which we are supposed to vote on by October 31st. And I say supposed to. Um, so stay tuned. I'll bring you more updates uh, on that. But there are uh, public hearings that are required to be a part of the process, as there were with state legislative districts. Um, and we were honored to host one um, at the University of Cincinnati, who I don't know if you know has the highest ranked football team in the state of Ohio right now. Um, so hopefully we'll have another opportunity to have um, some of those town halls down here again for the congressional lines. Um, the other things that um, people are probably seeing and hearing a lot about is we are having um, robust debate over vaccine policy um, and how far that goes. And that uh, changes by the day and by the moment. And there hasn't been um, there hasn't been any legislation that has been passed as of right now, uh, but there are a number of different approaches that are being considered at the state level. Uh, we are getting ready to start working on the capital budget, um, with which I know that Amberly is familiar, and so I want to be helpful to you. Our office wants to be helpful to you if you have capital projects that you'd like for, to be considered uh, for this round of funding. It usually begins in January. Applications are normally available in November, so we will be glad to furnish those to you and also um, help you however we can in completing those application materials so that your capital projects can be considered. 
Uh, lastly, just a couple things that we're working on in our office. Um, we've been working uh, to provide people access to an option for virtual testimony. We know it's hard for people to get to Columbus in the middle of the week to take time off from work or caring for kids or parents to pay to park so that folks can come up and have their voices heard. That is still uh, in process and we're fighting hard for that and particularly with COVID it has been really challenging for some folks to be able to come up and really meaningfully participate in the legislative process. Uh, we're also working on some pension transparency legislation for all five systems at the state level. And for the third time, we have introduced legislation to ensure that folks have access to their pay statements. So I'm really hoping that the third time is a charm um, on that one. Again, it is a privilege to represent uh, Amberly at the State House and want to give congratulations to council members uh, Conway, Kmine, and Warren who are finishing up their service um, on Amberly Council. Um, it has been a privilege to work with you. So again, thank you, Mayor, and uh, I'd be happy to answer questions either now or um, later if members of council have any. Are there any questions right now for Representative Kelly? Go ahead. Um, I uh, cannot answer that. I can neither confirm nor deny. Um, <laughs> uh, Ma'am, do you think Chief Wallace? We do have still the Chief Wallace fathead in our office uh, from City Hall selfie day. <laughs> so next time you come up to visit us, we will be sure that he is watching for you. <laughs> Did you have, I just want to make uh, just a brief comment. I wanted to thank you for your um, being for being our representative. I know uh, your phone line, your office door is always open. So I certainly personally thank you for that. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much for the update. Thanks for the proclamation. And Tammy, can you just make sure that the contact details that she gave, we get those on the website? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Sure. Okay. We'll now start committee reports and first is the finance committee and as chair of the finance committee i have a couple i have a resolution and an ordinance this evening first resolution 2021-29 is accepting the rates of the hamilton county budget commission for 2022 uh, as council recalls a couple months ago we submitted our budget which is the annual tax budget which is a formality. Uh, the county then uses those tax budgets to confirm the rates of taxation uh, for the village. The rates came back as the same rates. It's the our um, <clears throat> general fund 7% uh, rate and then the police levy fund. So uh, I hereby move that we accept the rates of the uh, Hamilton County Budget Commission for 2022 and approve resolution 2021-29. Second. Okay, it has been moved and seconded that we adopt resolution 2021-29. Are there any questions? Seeing none, the, it has been moved and seconded that we adopt resolution 2021-29. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? be noted that that resolution passes unanimously. Secondly, I have an ordinance 2021-11 before you. This amends our appropriations for the coronavirus relief fund. This is, uh, this is required because uh, the fund was fully um, appropriated, but one of the items that we thought was going to be expended at the end of last year did not get expended until this year and therefore the fund continued to accrue interest so we have an additional additional 150 dollars of revenues that have come into the fund in 2021 uh, we do have expenditures that that uh, can be used for that 150 dollars of interest but we need to uh, increase the appropriations by the $150. So I hereby move that we adopt resolution 2021-11, amending the appropriations for the coronavirus relief fund. Second. 
been moved and seconded that we adopt ordinance 2021-11 amending the appropriations are there any questions if not it has been moved and seconded that we adopt ordinance 2021-11 please call the roll richard bardak yes. peg conway yes ben hunt yes alita kmine yes tom muting yes ray warren yes and then the finance committee also and this will be an item that comes to uh, council at the november meeting we we met on september 29th and we discussed the the police levy which uh the police levy uh which has been approved by residents twice for five-year terms the final year of the police levy is next year so the committee met to discuss what next uh, the committee agreed that we should recommend the renewal of the levy uh, and this we're going to work on our uh, communication of this but um, it is important it's it, very beneficial to residents that we we do a renewal as opposed to a replacement and the reason that it's so beneficial is we get to keep our homestead exemption and so forth uh, for that so um, that's what the committee recommends the, the good thing for residents also is by doing a renewal it, the levy is levied on the value of the homes back in 2013 as opposed to the increased value of the homes and that's this was something that uh, there was a change in the law i think also in 2013 that allows communities to do renewals as opposed to replacements so it's very beneficial to residents to do the renewal uh, as opposed to the replacement and i think you know the other thing this is really highlighted and we're making good progress on is that if you look at uh with the village when we started this the police levy back in 2011 or 2012 it basically was funding roughly 70 percent of the expenditures of our police department uh we've now gotten that down to 40 percent and it's going to continue dropping because it, it, it basically the amount of money that we were able to get in at a, at a renewal level is basically frozen we, it will not increase so we've been able to continue to eat the inflation into the general fund as well as other increases in in our police cost so that is you know i again we're going to be working on our communication to residents about this but i think it's a very positive story and it will come to the uh, council at our uh, November meeting. Are there any questions? I'm sure there'll probably be some questions at the November meeting, but uh, that's just an update. And that concludes my report of the Finance Committee. Uh, we'll now move on to the Health, Education, and Welfare Committee, and Councilwoman Kamine is going to present that report. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, I'm standing in for the Vice Mayor today. If she were here, she probably would sing to you because she's a singer, but I will also spare you. I will join the list of people sparing you on that. Um, so I am uh, reporting about two things today. First, I'll start very briefly with the meeting we had on September 27th about our, our annual meeting about um, our deer management program. Lieutenant Bloom gave an update to us about our program um, that uh, has been continuing over the last several years where we uh, as a council have a policy to um, sort of empower our uh, police department to um, through a bow hunting program call 50 deer in the community per year um, this year we have like in the very near term previous years been um, calling in the neighborhoods instead of in the parklands it's been more successful as the deer are found more in the uh, neighborhood areas we do it in very safe, very specific places using the bow hunting method. Um, we are, it's been, you know, kind of on trend with previous years. We have hit the 50, um, the, the meat is processed and donated to a pantry. Uh, and so basically the committee's report, the, the, after the committee heard the report, um, the recommendation was to, you know, continue to 
support the program as it is. Um, and uh, we are the, the number of like accidents and, and removals related to um, deer who have, who, you know, a safety issue has occurred with a deer already are not, um, are lower right now, but this is the season where they tend to go up. And so the uh, message from the department that I heard in that meeting was to be very safe right now. It's mating season, so this is the time of year to be extra safe and extra cautious when you're driving around. Um, but of course, you know, if you have a, a animal that needs removal, um, you can call the village and that will be taken care of. But so the, there's, I don't believe there's any action for council. The committee just was recommending, um, heard the report and is recommending a continuation of that program. So that's, are that's there, dear. <laughs> yeah. Are there any Okay, so our other item is much more exciting, much more um, up, uplifting and good. Um, so uh, we are have before us today um, a resolution, resolution 2021-30, which accomplishes two things, um, both of which are probably a long time in coming. Um, the first is to declare the second Monday in October, which happens to be today, um, as Indigenous Peoples Day, replacing Columbus Day. I'm looking at the resolution and this dates back all the way to 1977 um, when Indigenous Peoples Day was first proposed and many uh, communities around the country have already done this. It's a really um, appropriate way to um, show respect and, um, and acknowledgement of and recognition of the Indigenous people who were here before us and their ongoing plight and struggle. Um, and then the second piece of the resolution is really um, something that I think came to us really from the Human Rights Commission. And I see everybody here, I wanted to call, call out names. Uh, Matthew Krauss, Nancy Warren, Jim Boney, Monica Lira, and Dr. Evelyn Jones, um, who, have, who really, I think, were steering the ship in terms of the um, land acknowledgement piece, which also many communities have undertaken as well, but really an ongoing uh, obligation, an ongoing opportunity that the village will, and it says in the language of the resolution I'm reading, recite a land acknowledgement, which we will actually do today, um, statement in at least one council meeting per year, so that we on an ongoing basis are recognizing and um, thanking those who came before us here on this on this land. That would be the Shawnee and the Miami here and uh, in, in this part of the country specifically. So um, I'm sure other people will have things to say, but basically I think what we'll do is we'll uh, pass this resolution. I'll move that we pass uh, resolution 2021-30 that accomplishes those things and then we'll actually say the land acknowledgement. Second. Okay, it has been moved and seconded that we adopt resolution 2021-30. It's a resolution regarding recognition of in indigenous peoples and land acknowledgement. Are there any questions? Any questions? Um, it's quick. I'll skip the acknowledgement so that we can do that. But just very briefly, I'll read the whereas. Whereas is so. Um, whereas the village of Amberley supports the recognition of the ongoing struggles of indigenous peoples of this land and the celebration of the thriving culture and value that all indigenous peoples add to our community and urges other organizations and public entities to recognize indigenous peoples day. Whereas the village recognizes that Amberley village is built upon the homelands and villages of the Shawnee and I'm, it's probably not Miami, but it's the, the word, the other word for Miami. Um, whereas the village has previously recognized Columbus Day as a holiday, which has been designated a federal holiday since 1937, and whereas the village supports the closing of the equity gap for indigenous peoples through policies and practices that reflect the experiences of indigenous peoples, ensure greater access and opportunity, and honor our nation's indigenous roots, history, and contributions. And whereas in recognition and support of these goals, the village wishes to celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day, which was first proposed in 1977 by a delegation of Native Nations to the United Nations-sponsored International Conference on Discrimination Against Indigenous Populations in the Americas. And so we will um, designate the second Monday of October heretofore be, to be known as Indigenous Peoples Day and recite the land acknowledgement at, at at least one council, uh, council meeting per year. And 
uh, we will be incorporating the above land acknowledgement statements in publications um, through our website and newsletters and so forth. Okay. Any questions? If not, it has been moved and seconded that we adopt resolution 2021-30. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Be noted that that resolution passed unanimously. So, would you like us to stand to recite? Sure. Okay, I don't know. Whatever you want, Mayor. <laughs> we'll Everyone, out. please stand, and, and Councilwoman K. Mine will lead us. Okay. As a step toward honoring the truth and achieving healing and reconciliation with those indigenous peoples who were affected most by colonization and broken treaties, we acknowledge the traditional Shawnee and Miami lands on which we now stand and on which the village of Amberley was built. And that concludes my report. Thank you. And I, as, uh, I really do want to thank the Human Rights Commission for all your work on this. Uh, the members are here this evening. And, you know, when the Human Rights, from my perspective, when the Human Rights Commission was formed, we talked a lot about, you know, a real opportunity for education. I think this is a primary example of that the Human Rights Commission is helping educate us on an important topic. And I, it doesn't stop here. I, you know, I think this will be a great way of continuing the education. And this is just one area where we can use our communication vehicles to educate our residents further on a very important topic. And not only important, but I think, I think it's fun. It, this is something, you know, learning is, is fun. And I, I think this is something that the Human Rights Commission is really helping us in, in, in an important area. So thank you very much. Uh, we'll now move on to the next item, which is the police and fire. Department. Thank you. Uh, the committee met actually in August, on August 10th, but I was not here in September to give a report. So I just want to share uh, the highlights of that meeting. That was our, one of our meetings where the chief provided a, a departmental update. So the first item that he shared with us concerns the uh, certification with the Ohio Collaborative, which you re may recall is a 12-person panel of law enfor enforcement experts and community leaders that establishes um, state standards for law enforcement uh, operations on things like use of force and, and training and recruitment. So we have they have been adopt, implementing the Lexapol system for their policies, which is an online um, type of software that gathers things together that used to be in, on paper. And so this has allowed a more streamlined process for sharing policies with employees. And so each week, Lieutenant Bloom sends out five or six policies for employees to review, and then there's a quiz. So this is, this is a step in one of the standards for certification with the Ohio Collaborative. Uh, he also let us know that he, they have been undergoing uh, training regarding implicit and explicit bias using a video from the criminal, National Criminal Justice Training Center that included the entire village staff. Um, that video was recently shared with council members um, for you to have, give a, get a look at it. Um, a while back, we um, agreed with the chief that it would be a good idea to support, to create a position called training supervisor, and Sergeant Gehring has been in that position now for five months, and that is going well. He rotates through all the shifts and meets with the staff and reviews paperwork and other procedures with them, and this has led to more uniformity and consistency in procedures and processes. Um, and finally, he shared um, an update on the progression planning process that is underway. He meets monthly with the command staff, which includes himself, Lieutenant Bloom, and the five sergeants. Um, they discuss topics like budgeting, um, committees, uh, racial profiling, use of, pro, uh, use of force, use of license plate readers, and cruiser cameras. The chief also meets with the individuals um, one by one to discuss their strength and areas for development as well as the demands of being a police chief. So that, that was kind of a useful insights into how things are going. That concludes my report. Are there any questions? 
Okay, we'll now move on to the Compensation and Benefits Committee report. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so that was actually a very good segue <laughs> to, to our committee. Uh, the Compensation and Benefits Committee met on, on September 29th, and um, we had two topics, both of which, again, were updates. There's no action this evening, but um, we also heard about succession planning from the manager, um, and really, this is an annual presentation that we asked to come to this committee, and I think it's really been productive and helpful. Um, and really, there are two kind of focuses on what we're hearing about here. Of course, the greater detail, it sounds like, is on the police department side and in the, in the police and fire committee, but um, generally kind of making sure that there are um, that there are processes and planning that is, that is happening and in place, looking at the tra trajectory and numbers. Um, there is really a, a practical process-oriented component where, there, you know, it's training and making sure that we're looking ahead to um, ensure that there are no knowledge gaps if and when the time comes. And then there are financial components of what we uh, get reports on as um, many employees retiring all at one time would have a you know financial impact. But we, several years ago, started planning that with a severance fund. and. Um, pleased to report from that meeting that our severance fund is in stable condition. We feel good about it, but we do have um, 15 of our 35 uh, full-time employees who are within 10 years of retirement, and many of our key employees are really on a shorter time frame than that. So a lot of planning is happening, and hopefully those reports will continue to come to this committee and to council because this is critical, um, critical things happening here. But it's really nice to hear from in multiple committees. Um, the other thing we talked about in this committee is just an update on employee benefits and employee benefit review. Um, typically, when we are doing our compensation meeting at the beginning of the year, we kind of get a quick and dirty update on what, where there may be gaps or issues. But this was a deep dive on our, um, our full kind of all the benefits that we provide and uh, a kind of a comp with other peer communities. It was very interesting, and um, information I'm sure is available. Uh, if, if you're interested, but um, we are, we really are, I think, in, in good shape in terms of uh, we are competitive. We try to stay competitive and try to stay on trend. So this also, I hope, will continue to be kind of an annual or um, periodic report to these committees so we can make sure we're doing everything we can for our employees. Um, and that was all we covered in that meeting. So that concludes my report. Are there any questions? Thank you very much. Uh, we'll now move on to the manager's report. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. I have three items I wanted to mention this evening, the first being the streets program. The streets program that you approved several months ago is underway. It has been underway. But then the within the next two weeks, you're going to see a significant amount of activity. So the streets that are being repaved this year include Winding Way, Esther Drive, Fair Acres Drive, and part of Section Road. The piece that's probably going to affect residents the most would be Section Road, because it's going to be on the eastern edge of the village going all the way to Aracoma. So it's going to capture a pretty good portion of Section Road. I would encourage you to find alternate ways around that area for the next week or two. Uh, but it will be, uh, it, traffic will be maintained, but it will not be simple. Uh, but that, the, uh, the project itself is part of our uh, $6.7 million accelerated street program that this council approved so, uh, lot this, uh, late last year. And so we're embarking on that. So this is just the beginning of the, this is the first of the eight year program that we're able to uh, take care of. The second item I wanted to mention was in regards to leaf collection. It begins this coming Monday, Monday, October the 18th. We will continue to collect brush during this period. However, our focus will be on leaf collection. Obviously, when we start on October 18th, it's going to be a light leaf collection. So we may make it through the village in one day. But give us another three weeks or four weeks, and it'll be a constant eight, uh, 10 hour days being able to vacuum leaves, which means brush collection will be given a lower priority. But we just encourage residents, if they have brush during this period of time, they can continue putting it out, but we may not get it at the same pace that we've gotten it picked up in non-leaf collection times. And the third item I wanted to mention is just a, a proud moment. Uh, you're aware that we lost a police officer, uh, a retired police officer firefighter, uh, Keith Souter. Uh, he was uh, um, left the village in 2014. 
uh, was diagnosed with MS and uh, suffered greatly over the last uh, several years, but uh, he passed uh, this, this past month. Uh, the village employees did a remarkable job of being at the service, uh, assisting the family, providing necessary services uh, that were of assistance to the, to the family. It was just a great uh, honor to be the, the village manager and seeing so many employees participate and put uh, money towards things that the family would need and taking care of one of our, one of our past employees. So the, and, and probably one of the most touching parts of the ceremony was the honor guard. The Hamilton County Honor Guard was present there. And if you've ever been in a service where the honor guard is present, it's quite touching to see the amount of dedication and concentration that it takes to have an honor guard present throughout an entire uh, memorial service. But uh, the Hamilton County Honor Guard did a fantastic job as along with the uh, village employees. So I just wanted to add my kudos to them. That concludes my report. Are there any questions for the manager? Thank you. Chief? I'm, I'm gonna kind of recap a couple of things that Tag to talk about as well as Scott. Um, as we uh, continue to move forward, you know, I basically could have another up to five years here in the department. And um, the progression planning for me is one of the most important parts of my job. And I'm taking it very seriously. And I think that to have the right person in place, this is not something, a transition that I would want what happened to me with a, a short, you know, 30 to 60 day window to learn the job was not the way to do, do that. So we've actually started this and it's gonna be a four to five year to make sure they know every aspect of the job. And this year they get to work on capital budgeting and things like that. But I think it's, we owe this to our, our village and we owe it to the, you know, all the residents and the council. But with that said, you know, comes to us working with on this Ohio Collaborative and these new supervisors learning the importance of the Ohio Collaborative. Um, uh, we work with the Center for Local Justice on the, with the Urban League of Greater Cincinnati. Um, they've recently been meeting with the Chiefs Association. We're one of the departments that came out in the beginning and, and met with them. And a lot of departments were reluctant, concerned. Um, the whole idea is to have the right mindset when you go into this, to understand the importance of, is it pointing out negativity in law enforcement? It is but that's what initiated this whole thing in general. But the whole idea of this program is to prevent future things from happening if we can do things differently. So that kind of goes right into our progression planning of you know, teaching these younger supervisors why it's important to, of community relationships. Um, why, you know, why do I belong to the most valuable kids thing in Cincinnati and why do we host that? Because it, it allows us to bring inner city kids here to the village to do special events for them because we don't have that ability, but we're able to make a difference. Um, our, the education part of it within turn our department, when we start our training supervisors to educate the guys in different areas such as racial profiling, you know, gender biases and things like that. And I want that instilled into our department where it's a regular, it's just normal. And then obviously our hiring. Our hiring is one of the hardest things and to hire for diversity is a very tough nowadays and every department's going through the, the same thing. Um, we've been very um, fortunate of our hiring and shooting for diversity and I'm, I'm proud of the department we have and I'm proud of the diversity we now have in our department. You know, 25 years ago, we didn't have that. So I think that's another aspect we have to, you know, mentally make a note and keep that in our front. You know, hiring has to be based on relationships and fitting in and understanding uh, the ways of Amberley Village. Um, lastly, I just want to mention that um, when Scott mentioned Keith Souter, um, I want to say that Keith retired here uh, at the age of 33 when he had to leave. And so when he passed away, he was just turning 41. So it was very hard. Um, I would just say that the police department, the village employees over the years have never let Keith not think that he's part of this village anymore. They went out there and they rebuilt his garage. It was collapsing. They've done lawn work, uh, a lot of uh, landscaping and things at the police department. 
And um, we still expect to have his wife and kids around the police department to meet and greet and be at things. With the, um, with the employees, we're able to donate money again rec recently. But one thing Keith asked me before he passed is he wanted new doors on his house, he wanted an alarm system, and he wanted his wife to have a riding mower because she push cuts the yard. So we, we do have the money collected amongst the employees to be able to pay for the doors. Um, the Indian Hill, I reached out to Indian Hill Hockey Association who does stuff for law enforcement. Uh, met with them and we went out and we were able to purchase a riding mower and deliver it to Keith's wife and kids. Um, so thanks to them and the other organizations that stepped up and helped out. Um, but overall, it was a great tribute and I think that, you know, having the manager and when you see the leadership of the village there, it, you know, it meant a lot by having him there standing behind the employees. Uh, that concludes my report. Any questions for the chief? More comment. Yeah. Welcome back. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, the mayor's report. First, I want to uh, thank uh, Councilwoman Kmine for pointing this out over the last month. I have a couple of of residents that have received awards. I mean, we we as council know how fortunate we are in the village that we have so many talented, committed residents in the village, and we see it all the time as people are recognized. But uh, Councilwoman Kmine sent uh, the village manager and I a few emails over the past month, and I just wanted to recognize those residents. Resident Debbie Brandt was recognized as Volunteer of the Year uh, by the Association of Fundraising Professionals. Ari Cohen is being recognized as one of the Enquirer Women of the Year, and I think that one, every year when I look at the Enquirer and see the Women of the Year, and I look at the village, invariably, one of the women, and it's usually six or seven that get recognized, one of the women is from Amberley Village, which is, when you think of Hamilton County and what percentage, so again, I think that is just so reflective of not only the talent, but the commitment that our residents have to things. And then Ann Sarenbrack Bach has received the Alan Cow Award from the Jewish Federation. So again, Congratulations to all of those, and I, you know, want to recognize all our residents that are that commit their time to these organizations and so forth, and and really thank you very much. Uh, next, we will be celebrating Arbor Day uh, on this Thursday. Traditionally, Arbor Day is celebrated in April. We are celebrating it in October this year because of COVID, but we will be having a tree planting uh, and we will be meeting out in front by the flagpoles at 530 on this Thursday to celebrate Arbor Day and to have the, the tree planting. Um, the next Environmental Stewardship Committee will be October 25th, which is two weeks from this evening at seven o'clock in the community room and related to the environmental stewardship committee i really want to thank kathy kramer and pete duffy who again chaired the one-stop drop event for the village this year that that took pl place i think it was september 27th um, they have they have chaired that event i think for the last five or six years and have really um, taken the event from its infancy to a very successful event uh, and really appreciate all of the chief's team that really helped out to make the event a success. And, and it, again, it is done with all volunteers uh, and many of the council members and residents volunteer and I very much want to thank everyone for that. Um, at the last council meeting, I um, highlighted to council that one of the things we want to make sure that we get done in November is the village manager's appraisal. Uh, we have let that slip a couple years till December and January, but we want to complete that in, in November, given the fact that we are going to have uh, three new council members and it's best that we do it 
uh, with the existing council. And the other thing that we're gonna have to be uh, doing a lot of work in November on is the budget. The budget will be approved by the new council, but I think it's important that the existing council you know, does the work of the streets committee and the police and fire committee going through the budgets and the finance committee. So we will have to make sure we get that work done uh, in preparation for that. Uh, and then finally, um, related to the new council, election day is November 2nd. Uh, I encourage residents to vote. Uh, yes, in our council um, elections are all um, not, they're unopposed, that's a good term. Uh, but there are other important items on the election, including Cincinnati School Board and things like that. So please, our residents, you know, traditionally, we have a very high turnout in Amberley Village. And I think, again, that's a reflection of the commitment of our residents. And I want to encourage that to continue. And that concludes my mayor's report. Are there any questions? Yes? Sure. This actually dates back to, to uh, 2019 and then through COVID we didn't get it done. And so it, it's just that, you know, everybody knows that I take an active position with the shield. So when a law enforcement officer is killed or injured in line of duty, I go to the hospital that night and I meet with the family and try to take care of them with financial needs. And a lot of the council members have donated and been contributed to the shield. But I, you know, this has been sitting in there and I, been waiting to get together and have counsel. So this is actually going to go to Jack and Burl Hazen for their contribution to the shield back in 2019 that they've never received their plaque yet. But, you know, as we all know, the, her continued support of the police department um, is greatly appreciated. So, Burl, here's your plaque. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you, Chief. Uh, new business, I know Councilwoman Conway has. Yes, I just wanted to um, offer an update from the local school decision-making committee at Pleasant Ridge Montessori, which, on which I represent Amberley Community. Um, after you've heard me talk for several years about the enrollment challenges there of the space being crowded, et cetera, uh, PRM has been approved for a building expansion after all this time, and now things are gonna move fast. So the design process is underway. There's a, a design committee that includes parents and community members from the LSDMC as well as the principal uh, and teachers from the LSDMC. Uh, the timetable uh, is for the design phase to be completed by April of 2022 and for construction to begin possibly as early as June of 2022 and be completed by the fall of 2024. So that's very ambitious. We'll see what happens, but they, it's moving now. So that concludes my report on that. And, you know, I, I really want to thank you for your leadership on the uh, LSDMC. Thank you. I am, no, I am no longer chair of that body, and I, will, I am, can continue as a member of it. I don't, it's not required to be a council member in order to represent, so I, can, I don't have to vacate right away. But I, I have expressed to the mayor that a successor will be needed. Any other new business? If not, we can consider the meeting adjourned. Thank you very much for attending. <laughs>